Hello everyone, this is the Functional Fridays podcast. We talk about jobs people have, current social issues, and much more. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Right. All right. (laughs) So, hello everyone. I am Nikki Pursuit. Welcome back to my Functional Fridays episode. I am here with, and I'll let him introduce himself. <laughs> hey everyone, my name is Cole Supple. I'm a singer-songwriter from Thousand Oaks, and I'm stoked to be here today. Yay, I'm excited. <laughs> so, first question I'm going to ask you is, how long have you been practicing the instruments you perform? This includes your vocals. Awesome question. Um, so I started playing guitar and singing when I was six years old. Um, I always loved the show called The Naked Brothers Band, where uh, that was Nat and Alex Wolf before they got super famous. And um, that and the Beatles kind of got me started playing guitar and writing songs and singing. So those three things were my main, you know, uh, instruments that I played yeah. and, and still do. And it's still my main focus. But um, I think around third grade, I started playing piano. In middle school, I started teaching myself drums and recording. Um, and everything like that but guitar vocals and songwriting that's my main my main shtick still would you say that's your favorite out of the all the things you do definitely definitely yeah it just uh it's one of those things where i i don't know why i love it so much and i don't know what hit me about it so early on but it's always been a, a consistent element in my life and mm-hmm. uh, the interest has never gone away so i i don't question that i feel really fortunate that yeah. um that was kind of my gift is that I, I like to play guitar and sing and that I've been uh, decent at it so far. So it's, uh, and it's always challenging me, but it always feels good at the same time. Heck yes. Yeah. Uh, so what genres of music have influenced you the most? I know you kind of just went over this, but what? Yeah. <laughs> I tend to ramble in a lot of my answers. So I nope, apologize if I end up it. answering all your questions before, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I definitely grew up uh, with rock and roll. That was my big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but over time, I mean, I've listened to everything in high school. I, I studied jazz for a while. Um, blues, blues is now kind of my favorite genre. It's just as a guitar player, um, something about, it's the same four, uh, three chords in every blues song. Mm-hmm. And it's the same progression in every blues song. But for some reason, the, even though it's very repetitive, I, I just love it. Um, so rock, blues, uh, and pop. I have, I mean, I've always had a weird relationship with pop because pop moves around so much. Yeah. Um, but I love a song that can bring a lot of people together, whether it be the Beatles, whether it be Taylor Swift, whether it be anything in between that. Um, I think there's something really special to writing a song that everyone loves. Uh, yeah. A lot of songs that come to mind are like Uptown Funk, Bruno Mars, Thinking Out Loud, Ed Sheeran, um, as far as more modern stuff, just songs that will last and songs that everyone uh, feels like they're part of in some way. So, um, but sort of all music, I'm always listening to a bunch of different stuff. And my main rule now is just, I just need the song to be good. As long as the song is good, no matter what genre or however they produce it, um, it kind of works out. Um, like Peaches, Justin Bieber, that's a, that's a recent yeah. favorite, even though that's, most people who know me wouldn't think I'm like into Justin Bieber, but uh, I think Peaches is an incredible song. It speaks for See, itself. That's what I was going to say too, is a lot of, I feel like a lot of musicians nowadays are like, ew, mainstream. I don't like yeah. that. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? And that goes for pop, that goes for anything, it, any exactly. genre. And I feel like that's a very, I like, I love your answer because it's like, I feel like you get inspiration from anything. Totally, totally. I agree. And, and it's not saying that I like all music. There's definitely songs and pop that I'm not a fan of. Um, but, but I don't know, I, I just, I look for the value and kind of the, the organic roots of every song. Um, and yeah, songs like Peaches hit me that way, where I just, I love it. And I, I wouldn't discriminate just because it's pop or just because it's Justin Bieber. And, you know, I'm not the biggest Bieber fan in the world, but um, yeah. definitely there's a handful of songs that I just like, I think the songwriting is great. The vocal is great. And um, so everything's different, but that's one of the great things about music too, is I think um, you can find little pieces of anything, any piece of music that hits you really well. Um, so, you know, even though there's certain genres I'm not as huge of a fan of, uh, you can always find something you like in any artist. Every artist has something uh, for everyone, you know? Exactly. You can always find that a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. And I feel like at that point, it depends just on the artist you like at that point versus the genre that... Exactly. Like- Totally agree with that. Yeah. Well, an artist's story has so much to do with it. I mean, sometimes you connect with with a character sometimes more than the music. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think whatever ends up bringing you to to find some value in this person or find some entertainment or some love or whatever you find in that artist, um, it's a really special thing. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Totally. 
So how long have you been performing for? And do you have a specific routine as far as like getting nerves off before performing or any like melting situation that you have? Yeah, that's an awesome question. Um, well, I started performing pretty much right when I started playing guitar. It was, it, I did a school talent show within a couple months. Um, and since then, I don't get super nervous. I, I get a little anxious because like I want to get on stage. Um, yeah. It's not like, I don't know, it's not like crippling anxiety or anything, but I'm just kind of like, 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 I can't do the five minutes before a concert. Like I'm sitting there like, I just want to get on stage so I can get this little, these little butterflies out of my stomach. I, Cause the second you start performing, everything's fine. Um, yeah. And you're off in kind of a different consciousness. That's for me, I, I feel like I kind of go into a different place when I'm uh, performing. And so, um, but it's kind of those five minutes before I'm just like, can we like make the concert start five minutes earlier? Can everyone get here five minutes earlier? Um, so we can, can we just start do this now. <laughs> no, exactly. That's the thing. And, and it's crazy because so many artists don't like to start their shows on time. Whereas I've always been crazy about that because I'm like, I advertised it for 7 p.m. I want to get started at 7 p.m. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's exactly. go. Exactly. But yeah, so overall, it's pretty much fine. It's, it's been okay. Yeah. Now, I want to ask you this question because when I saw you performing, you had uh, two other people with you. Do yeah. you always perform with others or do you like prefer to kind of do your own thing and perform on your own? I love yeah. playing with a band whenever I can. Yeah. Um, it just, as a solo artist, it, 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 there's a lot of logistics to figure out, uh, when putting a band together, because, you know, if you have like a band where it's like the same five guys that rehearse once a week, you can kind of go out anytime and do your thing. Whereas with yeah. a solo artist, um, typically you're finding other players who are coming in and the same guys aren't always available and don't always know your set list. Um, so it kind of just depends on, on what I've got the time for. When I book a show way in advance, you know, three or four months in advance, then I love putting a band together because we get a couple rehearsals in, we can get new songs in, old songs. Um, but probably the most of what I do right now is just playing by myself because logistically that's what works. But uh, I love when I get to play with the band. I love other players. I've got my favorite guys and, and I just call them up and, and we do our thing. So, yeah. yeah. So, do, so this makes me curious then. So when you go to every city you go to, do you have like your main guys or do you have a situation where it's like, oh, I have to switch this person out because they got sick or they're not available or? Yeah, so, I mean, as much as I've been an artist, I've also been a session guitarist and I've, I've played for other people and stuff in the past. So I've, I've met a lot of really talented players between kind of all over Southern California and, and that area. And I do, I do sort of have consistent guys when I'm in like Ventura County. Yeah. And, oh, did I cut out? No, you're good. I still see you. I think. There you go. You're, you cut out for a second, I think. I think I cut out for a sec. Yeah, Did there I? you go. You're good. Okay, cool. We're back. <laughs> um, when, I'm, when I'm up in Ventura County, I've got main guys I use. Uh, anytime I'm performing in, down in LA, it kind of it shifts around a bit because I've got a lot more players that I know out in LA. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, there are definitely my core guys who I like playing with the most, but they're not always available. So um, it does kind of shift around from city to city. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. So what's the, what's your favorite track you've created on your own and what's your favorite cover song that you've covered? Hmm. You mean like covered and released or just like Instagram or anything? Anything. Okay. Let me actually, let me take a look. So Hmm. I assume it's different based on like mood or like depending on the it day. It can be. Yeah. And I mean, any artist listening to this or just any artist in general know like the, the crippling <laughs> self-doubt you get when you <laughs> listen to your own stuff. But then yeah. sometimes you're stoked for it. So sometimes like, um, I don't know. I think most consistently there's a song called October on my Platinum Recovery EP that that's like a seven minute song. But um, I just like a lot went into that. It was kind of a, a weird putting that one together, but that's my favorite personally. And I think that's the style I'm going to start going towards a little bit, which is more that alternative uh, sort of pop, a little bit rock infused sort of sound. Um, so I'd say right now, yeah, probably October as far as what's released. And then for covers, I'm always finding myself enjoying different covers. Um, right now there's a cover called, it's called Pearly Gates. It's by a blues guy named Blind Willie McTell. Um, from 1954 and I 
think it cut out again. I think you did too. Your video froze, but I hear your audio, I think. All right. Now we're back. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. But yeah, sorry. I think it's my Wi-Fi, but might have to edit that. Um, <laughs> it's all good. Don't worry about it. Cool. So yeah, I think October, that's the original song of mine. And then there's a song I've been playing at at shows right now called Pearly Gates by a blues guy named Blind Willie McTell. Um, this song was recorded back in like 1954, but um, it's this cool kind of gospel praise tune. Yeah. And it's in the key of E. I like it on my voice and it's been really fun. Um, but it's always shifting. There's a lot of different covers I love to play and mostly kind of obscure covers though. I'm kind of shying away from all the just like generic kind of people pleaser covers recently. Not that those are a bad thing. I just, I like getting into kind of more, uh, what's it called? Uh, whatever B-side sort of covers. Exactly. No. And I think like whatever you end up finding for what suits you is the best thing. Well, totally. And that's another thing too, doing covers is there, there's a lot of artists I admire out there who take a song and then they make it their own rather than just trying to copy what the original artist did. Yeah. Um, and especially Jeff Buckley, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, he's done a lot of great Bob Dylan tunes, Nina Simone, lots of great jazz stuff where I would have never guessed it was someone else until I heard the original version. And so that would kind of be my goal going forward with covers is to kind of make them sound a little more like me and, and turn them into my own thing where it suits yeah. my voice. And, and that kind of thing so yeah and when it, when you covered i forgot what song it was i think it was spain when you performed it live at 507 i think you froze again <laughs> you good yeah we're back okay okay <laughs> uh i was mentioning when you did your cover of spain at 507 i think it was spain the jazz yeah. tune yep you made me start loving jazz again too no so way i i <laughs> can't stop listening to that specific cover if you guys haven't watched that video go back and i'll link it down below and everything yeah. but that was my whole like that was my favorite cover in the whole like your guys have said killer that's a hard tune the, yeah. the guys who i had with me jermaine and alex they're like highly trained jazz dudes they they speak that language best but uh chick yeah. korea just passed away i think a month or two ago and so yeah. um that's always been a song that, that i love to play and uh killer killer tune great song you guys did amazing covering it. And I, I, I totally see you doing well in like the realm of like blues and jazz and everything. So yeah. Yeah. Even though That's they're great. both very different genres, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they can be very different genres. I think I won't even comment on it because the second anyone in either community hears me comment on jazz or blues, it, it'll turn into a big fight. So I love it. I hope everyone else loves it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So what are, places you've traveled to to perform and what has been your favorite place that you've traveled to to perform so far mm. so i think i have traveled out of the state to perform with other ensembles like throughout high school and things like that i haven't performed out of state at, for a cole supple gig yet um yeah. I'm trying to think i played all around la pasadena ventura county um i've played a little bit up in san luis obispo I'm trying to think of where else Idlewild, I've played a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think of a favorite spot I've traveled to, though. I played this, I played like two songs in Boston once. I was visiting some family out there, and uh, there was this guy up in, I forget, some sort of central square in central Boston, and this dude let me get up and perform two songs there. So I'd say that was the farthest, maybe one of my favorite spots I've played outside of all the play? LA spots. If you don't mind me asking. And I think you froze again. <laughs> All right, you're good. <laughs> I was gonna say, what two songs did you perform when you were there? Ooh, that was a, several years ago. I'm trying to think. It probably would have been like "Here Comes the Sun" by the Beatles, and then probably probably "Fortune," which was a single I released in 2018. Yeah. So probably those two. I'm guessing. I don't remember though. I'd have to find the video. <laughs> That's that sounds fun. Yeah, it's good. Well, and the thing, I was kind of nervous. My, my cousins were sitting there like, you, you got to go up and ask that guy to let you perform. And I was like, no, he's doing his thing. He's out here getting paid because he's, he's a street performer. But um, yeah. so I just took a little leap of faith and, and he was like, yeah, give me a little break. We'll do two songs. That's cool. That was awesome. Totally. That was fun. And it's, it, I feel like it's a, a lot of those sporadic moments where you're just like, whoa, okay, that happened. 
Exactly. Yeah. And, and the adrenaline kind of has to hit you a little fast. Whereas like those gigs, I kind of like, cause like I said, typically the five minutes before I play a show, I'm like yeah. anxious. Cause I, I want to get going. Whereas when it's kind of like, you're just like one and done quick in and out, like didn't know you're going to perform. That's good. Cause there's zero anticipation. There's zero anxiety. You just are like there and done. And, um, and it's fun. You connect with different audiences and new people. So it's always a nice time. Well, that's what I mean. Like, that's what I'm seeing from what you're saying too, is that like the crowd in Boston is going to be different than the crowd here in LA or like totally. out in, you know, slow or whatever. Every exactly. city is going to be different. Totally. And that's something, well, that's one of the reasons why I'd love to go on tour soon is just to like yeah. test that out. How does my music flow in different places? And, um, you know, I don't think I'd be able to tour with big ticketed venues yet, but maybe like a little coffee shop tour or something, something casual where I can just kind of get a feel for, for what people are like in, in other States. Exactly. That sounds really fun too. That would be great. And oh, I'm thinking I've also performed on Catalina Island, which is like right South of LA for, for little boy scout camps down there. I, I bring my guitar out and um, those were fun. Cause those, there were a bunch, like there were a ton of people and I just got up for that one. I did, um, Jumpin' Jack Flash by the Rolling Stones. So that was that was maybe like 2013, but uh, that was a memorable one, yeah. That makes me jealous. <laughs> I'm actually about to go to Catalina for my first time next week, so. No way, I was just there last week. I don't know if I told you that before, but. I saw on your we, Instagram story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's so beautiful out there, it's great. It'll be, I planned it for September, I think, but I'm going to Big okay. Bear next weekend. Oh, cool, it's gorgeous up there too. Big well, then you get, you get some ocean, you get some mountains. That's exactly. Stuff. There you it. go. <laughs> it's a fun adventure. It'll be great. Catalina, well, Catalina is like a little bit like Hawaii, almost just less hot because the, the water's super clear. Um, mm. The temperature doesn't get too bad. It's like perfect out there. I love it. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. I saw your story and that made me like be 10 times more excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be awesome. All over Catalina is so beautiful. You'll love it. I'm excited. Anyway, totally. back to the questions. Um, with everything that's gone on in the pandemic, how has that affected you as an artist and a performer? Mm. Well, it almost shut down my entire operation, sort of. Um, yeah. Not that, you know, I'll, I'll never quit doing this. I just, um, like, I have to do this with my life is the way I view it. But uh, COVID really challenged it. I just, I got really bored. I got really isolated, uh, like so many other people. I mean, this is a similar struggle, but my, my motivation suffered quite heavily. And um, so I was hardly writing. I mean, I, after, sorry, I did the EP in the beginning of 2020 between 20, uh, end of 2019 and beginning of 2020, a little bit into the pandemic. Um, but then since kind of April of 2020 until now, um, not much has been going on. So as far as writing or recording, um, I released one single, but that was kind of already finished. So. I've done a little bit of writing here and there. I'm now getting back into shows, which I feel motivated to do again. Um, but just everything artistically was kind of shut down for a bit. And it was good though. It gave me some time to work on myself as a person, which is really important and, and get back in touch with, with why I'm here doing what I'm doing and how I want to continue doing it. Cause um, I think what I realized a lot of throughout the pandemic is just uh, places where I wasn't being authentic and what I viewed as a, a music career, even though I'm, not famous yet or anything, but, uh, you know, so I'm, what I'm striving for is, is authenticity in everything I do, which mm -hmm. goes back to the point I made earlier of like with covers, I don't want to do any more people pleasers. I want to do covers that I think make me sound good, that I think define me as a person, as an, and as an artist. Um, because if, if I'm sitting around playing whatever the most recent number one hit is, but I don't like it, then yeah, I might get a little attention and I might get an Instagram repost or two or something. But, um, but will I actually connect with that person? Will I like gain them as a, you could say a fan, but, but is there a connection there? Which, which is the whole purpose of, you know, what we're doing with music is to connect with people and, and develop this community around art. And so I just realized, even though it's a little tougher, I don't, I don't feel quite as accepted maybe or, or loved if I don't play some sort of people pleaser. Um, I'm just trying to embrace that and, and develop the confidence just to go through and, and play exactly what I want to play and kind of, uh, be authentic as an artist. I, I think that's the only control I have in what I do. Um, I could sit around and, and do people pleaser covers all day, but I just don't think I get to the places that I want to get by okay. doing that. So that makes me curious then, because I know every artist is very different with this point of view. And mm -hmm. I want to know yours is that, um, 
how do you take advantage of social media then? Because I know some artists are very much like, I'm not really into social media, like find me at my next performance and like talk yeah. then. Or some artists are very much like, I'm going to do live streams every week. Like I'm very involved in social media. Yeah. So I feel like every artist is very different with that. Totally. And that's a question I've struggled with a, with a lot because between maybe 2018 and, and 2018 and all throughout 2019, um, I went pretty hard with social media. I was doing the posting that everyone tells you to do. I was doing the stories. I was mm-hmm. doing a little reel here or two or, or TikToks or whatever. Um, and I'm not ruling it out. I'm just kind of taking a break from too much of that right now. I'm focusing on, like I said, live events and doing actual things. Um, mm-hmm. And then I'll, I post about those and I post little clips. But, um, you know, I'm, I'd say my, my ultimate answer for that is, is undecided right now. We'll have to see what the future holds because I'm, I'm not ruling out that social media is a really, really strong tool. And it's really important for artists nowadays. Um, but I haven't found a... a what's the word, a flow with it yet that I feel comfortable with and where I feel motivated to do it. Um, the, the one thing I'll, I'll say right now is that I personally like focusing on larger pieces of work, bodies of work, full songs, things like that. Whereas for me, the, the issue I have right now with doing TikToks or reels or stories all day long is that those are tiny pieces of content. And I just think the, the way I've always made art isn't in small um, sums. So it's absolutely no disrespect to people who do that. Um, it's just where I'm at right now and, and where my motivation lies. So we'll see for the future, though. If, if I end up working with people who want me to be more active on social media, I'll totally do that. But um, yeah. so no decisions right now. And if I like or dislike social media, I'm just kind of going with the flow for a little bit. So you feel like, yeah, I see that because it's like, you, will, you feel like you have that confidence when you make a song and you feel, you know, there's more of an outcome to that, you know, versus reposting whatever post you posted, you know, five months ago or whatever totally. the situation may be. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, like I said, I'm not ruling anything out. Um, I just think for my focus right now is on full songs and live shows. Um, but we'll see, because I think like the next time I release music, then I will have to push the social media a little harder. So my thought is maybe I won't be doing social media 24-7 and trying to turn that into a job. But every time I do have a release, do be pushing that on social media, be doing all the, the bells and whistles that go along with it. So, um, but I'm still learning. <laughs> I don't know this too well myself. We're figuring it out just like everyone else. Solely but surely. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So what advice would you give someone who's trying to do what you do? So like performing, music making, all the mm-hmm. great stuff and amazing stuff you do. Mm-hmm. How, what advice would you give someone who's starting out like right now in this situation and just totally. all that? Well, so it's cliche, but, but don't compare yourself to others. Um, I struggle with this immensely, just like everyone does. So I'm not trying to preach. I'm trying to sympathize and and advise. Um, But I feel like the moments where I thrive the best are the moments where I feel like I'm doing something important and where I'm not worried about someone who can sing higher than me or someone who can play guitar faster or um, someone who has better songs. I I think we're not in competition with each other. There's space for everyone to be putting their work out there. So, um, and, and trust me, still in my head, there's still people who I'm like trying to, be in competition with even though you're not physically in competition with them it's it's all a mental game so um but yeah when, when i can kind of alleviate some of those fears or worries and, and just accept that we're all here on the same playing field you know we can all have fans we can all have people who respect our work um that helps me alleviate some of those fears and just kind of be my authentic self um because that that's the other kind of part to that advice about not comparing yourself to others is be yourself the best you can. Uh, Cause again, I, I think that's the only control we have as people to be original is by being yourself, even if that's not what people like right away. And um, again, not preaching. I'm in the middle of kind of experimenting with being myself for the first time in, in a long time. Um, Cause you know, this, this kind of teenager to 20 year old age is where we're putting the most pressure on ourselves to be someone else. And, and cause we want to be accepted. And, and I, I have fallen under that category the same as, as many other people. Um, but what I'm working on is just, you know, 
failing a million times by being myself. So that hopefully that one time I am successful, it, uh, it's really meaningful. Of course. And I, I totally agree with you. I also feel like it's a big thing in our, just in our generation being yeah. in our twenties and thirties. It's that no matter what art you're doing, people are constantly feeling down. It's like, exactly. why not just be equal on, not equal, but just support each other in this. Totally. Realm. totally. And it's a hard thing. Again, like, I feel like so many people when they get like artists like myself, when they get asked, what kind of advice do you have it? Not that they're talking down to people, but it turns into this, like, well, I do this. So you better be doing that. And my thing is like, I just think it's important to address common struggles sort of with this kind of stuff. And, mm -hmm. and this doesn't just apply to music. This applies to a lot of places in life, which, which is why I say that I'm, I'm a work in progress myself on it. Exactly. Um, but yeah. And, and I'd say, maybe advice specifically into music. Um, figure out your priorities with music. Do you want to be a TikToker? Do you want to be a guitarist? Do you want to be an artist? Do you want to be an entertainer? Um, really establish your goals so you can figure out what it is you're trying to do. Definitely spend time experimenting, but I think um, kind of making your mind on, on what the big goal is, is important. And then following that all the way to the top, you know? Mm -hmm. Of course, that's great advice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So is there any last comments or anything that you would like to make since we're coming to an end? Um, I'm trying to think. I've got a show coming up on the 30th at Jack's Pizza in Moore Park. If anyone wants to come out to that, July 30th. I don't know when this podcast is coming out. Yeah, um, it's coming out this Friday. So. Okay, cool. So yeah, Jack's Pizza in Moore Park, the 30th. Um, there will be a couple other bands in the act, but I just got booked there and... Otherwise, that's kind of what I've got going on right now. I, I appreciate everyone who's listen, listening to my music, and uh, I'm just about to get back into the studio soon. Um, just, again, kind of letting the ideas marinate a little bit and not pushing myself for the first time to, like, feel forced to be making music. So um, kind of excited about the songs I've been playing, and you can come hear some of those new songs at these upcoming gigs. But, uh, yeah. We're, you we're heard it here us. first. There we go. <laughs> Cheers. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> totally. I'll link everything of yours social media wise in the description so everyone can find you and your music. And awesome. Yeah, Thank you so much for having me, Nikki. That thank was you awesome. for being on. <laughs> I appreciate it.